Boric acid, which is H3BO3, is not a Bronsted acid, but a Lewis acid. Letter A. Write an equation for its reaction with water. Okie dokie. So let's write an equation, right? We have H3, and maybe I'll just say, okay, letter A over here. So we have H3BO3 plus the reaction with water. So we're adding that to H2O. And from there, we have to find a equation, right? What are the two products? Well, let's see. They did tell us that boric acid is going to act as a Lewis acid. So I'm just going to write that there, Lewis acid. And then that means that the water has to act as the Lewis base. Okay, cool. Now I wrote down here what the general definitions are for a Lewis acid and a Lewis base. It's not about proton transfer as Bronsted-Lowry, but it's all about electron transfer. It always starts with the base. The base is always what, what kicks off the reaction because the base has the two lone pairs, or not the two lone pairs, the two electrons, one lone pair, that they will donate to the acid. The acid will accept that lone pair and turn it into a bond. So in order to, to see what's going on here, chances are we're probably going to have to draw this equation. Or not draw the equation per se, but draw what these two compounds look like. Now, I do see that in letter B, it says predict the shape of the anion thus formed. So maybe we can start, you know, by, by seeing what those shapes are. So let's write out what H3BO3 is. I'm going to write it over here because I have a little bit more room. Now, remember, hydrogen is not in the middle, right? And between boron and oxygen, the least electronegative is always in the middle. So in this case, we have boron in the middle, surrounded by those three oxygens, right? It, it, they said it was an acid per se. So that means that the oxygens come first, and maybe I'll put the oxygen up here, and then comes the hydrogens. So then I'll say H, H, and H. Now let's just draw out how many uh, valence electrons we have. Each hydrogen always has one valence electron, so one dot goes to each hydrogen. Each oxygen has six valence electrons, so I'm just going to draw six for each. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three three, four, five, six. And then uh, the boron has three valence electrons. Make your single bonds and see if you need to add anything. So let's see. Single, 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 single. And as I'm doing this, I do see that everybody is cool, right? Boron, remember, is a special case. If it's neutral, it only wants to have three bonds, not four. So we're good here. So we have this compound coming in with a water, right? Oxygen in the middle, surrounded by the two hydrogen. Each hydrogen, just like before, has one valence electron, and each oxygen has six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Draw the dots. Draw the lines. And it has the octet rule, so we're good to go. Now, this is the Lewis base. This will kick everything off. It has a lone pair, right? That's the kickoff. The base always donates that lone pair. So maybe I will just do it on the bottom because it's easier. These electrons will go right in to the boron because boron can have four bonds. Neutral wants to have three, but this these lone pairs say, Hey, you, you have, you know, you can have another bond. So that goes in here. And when that happens, these electrons turn into a bond. So if I just start building, I'm going to have a bond with that oxygen. And those two uh, electrons are this bond. So I have an O, right? And then I have two hydrogens branching off. So I have one and I have one. So I have one H and I have one H. And then you only have one pair left. So one, two. Now, this is going to be what it is in the beginning. 
But now what happens is this oxygen is not happy. If you look at all the other ones, they only have two bonds, two bonds, two bonds. So what does this one have to want to have? It wants to have only two bonds. This one has to stay because that's the one that's bound to the boron. If you've noticed that they're all the same. So one of these bonds has to go. Doesn't matter which one. So let's just say that this hydrogen leaves. That's going to be the other product. And it always leaves as a proton. And those electrons go back to the oxygen. Just like the other ones. You see how it has two lone pairs, two lone pairs, two lone pairs, and now two lone pairs. And this is going to be your product. So now you just have to count them up, right? So looks like it's going to be, and maybe I'll just get rid of this, right? And this we don't need anymore either. So it's just going to be H4 now. One, two, three, four. So H4, B, O4. And that's the anion, because if we did the formal charge, the boron now is going to be a negative charge. So that's a negative. Let me just move this over because I want to keep this because this will help us in the answer, uh, you know, later. And then plus that H plus that had to leave because all the oxygens want it to be the same. And that is your final answer for A. So A is done. B. Now it says predict the shape of the anion. Anion means that you had a negative charge. And that makes sense because the boron is the negative. We have to predict the shape of the anion that was formed. And remember, the shape always comes from the central atom, the most central atom. And in this case, if I'm looking at this compound that I made, the central atom is the boron in the middle. So I just have to zoom in on the boron. In this case, the boron just had four single bonds. I don't care what's going on with the oxygens. I don't care what's going on with the hydrogens. When you're determining the shape, right, the geometry shape, you only look at the central. And in this case, it just had the four bonds. And remember, four bonds, this is kind of also like a review, four bonds, zero lone pairs, so maybe I'll just say the word zero. Four bonds, zero lone pairs is always tetrahedral. So that is the shape. Keep in mind that there is linear, trigonal planar, tetrahedral, trigonal pyramidal, all that types of stuff. That was, I believe, also in chapter seven, chapter eight. So that's also a refresher. If you guys need a more in-depth you know, going over that, you know, these pieces of information, always check those, those chapters out on the channel. All right. So B is done. And the last one for this question is C also a, uh, review, right? What is the hybridization on the boron consistent with the shape that you have predicted? So hybridization always comes from what's going on here. There are four things that are surrounding the boron. And four things always accounts for four letters. So when you're doing your hybridization, you always start off with one S and then you add on your P's. So if I need four letters, that means that I have one letter, that's the S, and then how many remaining P's? Three, right? Because I have three P's, one S, that's a total of four letters. And that is the hybridization. So sp3 hybridization tetrahedral for the shape. And then we have this balanced equation for that equation that they asked for. And we are done with this problem. Whoop, whoop. What do you think? I really hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel. And um, yeah, thank you so much. I hope you guys are having a great day. Let's keep studying hard. Good luck on your future tests and quizzes. And I will talk to you soon. Bye bye.